So as you can see on this TV, we're having a uh, problem on the right hand side, what would be the left from this point of view of the television with the blurring, ghost imaging, and double imaging. Uh, after disassembly and troubleshooting, uh, basically what I've done is locate it down to this ribbon cable assembly right here. Uh, unfortunately, this is a bonded uh, assembly and the wires are really too fine pitch uh, to either you know put a connector there or solder or anything of that nature. Um, and the problem is intermittent basically because this is loose and what we found is that uh, as you can see when I tap it I can get the problem to come in and out uh, simply by just wiggling and messing around with this right here. Um, you can see as I can none of the other cables I can wiggle those all I want so those are all uh, pretty sturdy um, and the problems on the right hand portion of the screen which would indicate this cable right here uh, the solution to this is because this cable is starting to delaminate it's uh, some of the wires are not making good contact with the board so by applying gentle pressure uh, we can essentially fix this problem and take away the intermittent and uh, have good contact uh, by applying mechanical pressure uh, what I think is going on here is that uh, over time these cables get pretty hot uh, and that the continued heat and cooling cycles are causing the uh, adhesive to uh, soften up and come loose with time. Um, I looked it up and the manufacturing process is basically what's called an anisotropic adhesive which conducts only vertically and not horizontally which uh, allows the pins to conduct uh, correctly without shorting. Uh, not only is this adhesive very difficult to come by, uh, it's also very expensive and uh, I really don't have the equipment to line that cable, that ribbon cable up properly with the board. Uh, that would probably be best done under a stereo microscope. So we're going to go with just applying mechanical pressure to maintain the context. Uh, so what I did is uh, I went to Home Depot uh, got some rubber uh, weather seal that's adhesive backed. Um, so what this will do is I'm gonna it's gonna go across the top of the connector so that when I put the frame on, that uh, pressure is mechanically maintained on that, which should keep the contacts uh, firmly in place, allowing the TV to operate uh, without any uh, intermittent issues. Uh, so how long this will last? I don't know, uh, but it'll give it'll definitely give this TV some additional life that it did not previously have. So as you can see, uh, we've got the frame reattached to the uh, television set, which with those uh, foam pads should be holding pressure uh, onto that uh, that bonded ribbon cable. I went ahead and put one pad on uh, all of the ribbon uh, cables going across the top uh, just in the event uh, that they start uh, to delaminate so that I don't have to go back in here a uh, second time. But as you can see, uh, with the tapping um, and squeezing up here, that that cable is, uh, this is holding nice and firm. Uh, the problem seems to uh, get to flicker a little bit, but that's normal uh, considering you're flexing on some of this. Uh, uh, so it looks like this is going to be a hold up uh, well. Uh, hopefully this will uh, keep this TV running for some time. Um, if it uh, goes down, I will post how long it's held for. But again, uh, this is $3 worth of uh, rubber weather sealant from Home Depot. Uh, not quite meant for this application, but uh, looks like it's going to work just fine. Um, and again, the recommended fix from Sony is basically to replace the television set, which retails this particular model, uh, Sony KVDL uh, 46S 4100 46- uh, inch LCD uh, TV retails for right around $600. Uh, so 
for three dollars uh, we basically were able to repair this. So while we're back here uh, you can see we've got the frame back on um, we're applying pressure uh, pretty fair amount of pressure on our pads there um, so what we also have here is this is the LVDS cable uh, which was the original problem uh, and that the strain relief was actually rotated 90 degrees putting stress on this connector right here uh, so that cleaned up things a lot uh, by rotating it taking the stress off of this connector here uh, this is the main A board or signal board you have your TCON board here, your main power supply board, uh, and your inverter board here, which supplies power to the back lamp. Um, what I have here is a piece of what is supposed to be RF uh, shielding that was applied up here. Um, and it's basically just adhesive-backed aluminum foil. Uh, the problem is, is that in order to provide RF shield, it has to be grounded. Uh, which adhesive on here is uh, non-conductive. Um, got an meter out, so I, as you can see, I can uh, clip one lead on here uh, onto the foil, and then going over to the back adhesive here and touching it off. I'm still uh, getting an open circuit by connecting to the adhesive. Uh, whereas if I go over here to the foil, I get a closed circuit. Uh, let me turn on the continuity check. Uh, so it'll beep for you. So here we have a connection. And as you can see, against the adhesive, we do not. Uh, so as far as RF shielding goes, this is absolutely worthless.